Hi everyone! A lot of you have been submitting YouTube comments, and a lot of you guys have questions on prostate cancer that you would like us to ask Dr. Scholes. And today, we're going to answer those questions. Okay, so our next question is, there's a lot of research in combination of focal and other therapies to treat different areas, uh, one identified tumor and others without visible tumor. This person is thinking that they would like to use a combination of focal plus seeds, and they want to know your opinion on that. I could see doing focal with seeds, but if someone is going to undergo a standard seed implant, that covers the whole prostate. So I don't really see much rationale for doing additional treatment to the focal tumor since the seed implant is designed to cure cancer anywhere in the prostate. The second half of their question is, can we use a PSMA PET to try and find unidentified tumors and then target them for focal therapy? Yes, I, I think no one's doing PSMA PET in men that haven't had a diagnosis of prostate cancer, but the um, uh, you know there are now scanners that can do both MRI, which we've been advocating as a good way to detect prostate cancer, and PSMA PET all in one scan. And uh, Dr. Dan Margolis, who's going to be speaking at the September 2020 conference, uh, is an expert uh, out of Cornell University in these scans that um, do both a PSMA PET and an MRI at the same time. So what do you get by adding the scans? Well, the MRI gives a little uh, finer resolution as to what's going on in the prostate. Uh, the PSMA PET only lights up with prostate cancer. So when MRIs or in CAT scans or in bone scans are done, you see shadows and based on the pattern, you assume what's cancer and maybe what's something else. But what's unique about PSMA PET is that it uh, only lights up with the prostate cancer itself. There's some exceptions to that, but practical terms, it's just uh, telling you if it's prostate cancer or not. And that's incredibly useful because uh, you can really make the diagnosis with PSMA PET. And then of course it tells you precisely where it is located in the prostate or outside the prostate. This next question comes from a daughter and she commented, my dad had his first uh, ADT treatment and his PSA uh, got down to 0.1. Then after two and a half months, just yesterday, it was 1.4. His doctor says it's still below four and that they don't need to do another ADT shot. And she's really concerned that his PSA is rising incrementally. What is your opinion? Well, I would check the testosterone levels and make sure that the uh, hormone treatment is working properly. The testosterone should be very low. And if the testosterone for some reason is coming back, the shots aren't working, that can happen in very rare circumstances, then that would explain why the PSA is rising. Uh, so make sure they check the testosterone. But um, it's quite unusual for the PSA to get to undetectable or down to 0.1 and then suddenly start rising. Uh, that can happen in people that start with very advanced disease and have known metastasis. Uh, but most people that achieve a PSA 0.1 will maintain that for a long time. So it's certainly not something you just want to sit around and watch and wait for it to go higher. Uh, someone needs to figure out why isn't the treatment working because that's very unusual and it is uh, concerning. Uh, the, the rising PSA while on an effective hormone treatment bespeaks of uh, hormone resistance, which is something that requires Provenge and Extandi and Zytiga and other effective therapies. Thank you. I think, first of all, I think it's amazing that this daughter's getting involved with her dad's prostate cancer case, but it's really intelligent to be able to ask these questions and move forward and maybe fight her doctor and say, hey, we need to get this checked. So that's good. Yeah. Um, the next question is, does anyone know about the effectiveness of early detection of cancer recurrence comparing radical prostatectomy and radiation? Yeah, I mean, I'm... Uh, Definitely not a fan of surgery, radical prostatectomy, but you could argue maybe that the one final advantage left, uh, all the other advantages seem to have evaporated, but the one final advantage is that it's easier to monitor for relapse because there's no background noise uh, or PSA being created by the residual prostate, which is the case when men have radiation. So historically that's been a problem, but the PSMA PET scans are probably taking that problem away as well. Uh, so. Historically, if people have had radiation uh, and uh, testosterone recovers, let's say they had hormone therapy and the PSA will start rising, they would argue that the PSA had to rise two points above the lowest level for you to be 100% sure that the cancer is back. So that was, let's say the PSA dropped down to 0.2. So they argue you have to rise, the PSA has to rise up to 2.2 before you say we got a problem. 
Well, that's ridiculous because probably if the PSA is even over one, it's very suspicious uh, with some exceptions. So uh, you do get an earlier read on relapse in men that have had surgery. But now with PSMA PET scans, if the PSA is misbehaving, let's say it goes up to 0.5, um, you can get a PSMA PET scan and you can uh, determine if there's any persistent viable cancer anywhere. Okay, so we're moving into the advanced category. And um, the first question we have is, can metastatic prostate cancer be cured at any stage? Uh, yes, it certainly can. Uh, the, um, there's studies going back many years where men have had radical prostatectomies, and when they removed the pelvic lymph nodes, they found metastatic cancer in the pelvic lymph nodes. And if there's only one or two lymph nodes with cancer in them, with no further treatment, no hormone treatment, uh, no radiation, oh, 10, 15% of those men never did relapse. They were cured even though they had metastatic disease. So there's no really disputing that sometimes metastatic disease can be cured. Uh, now, in this modern era, we've gotten much more aggressive, you know, giving chemo and hormones to try and get rid of any microscopic specs, radiating metastatic sites. And uh, there's a, a small but growing percentage of people that are being cured by that approach. This next question is from a wife, and she's uh, talking about her husband. He has bone mets on his spine, his shoulder, his hip, and one leg. The cancer is also metastasized, metastasized to several uh, lymph nodes. And he has had radiation to his spine and his pelvic area, and he's now going on hormone therapy. And she wants to know if there's a possibility of the hormone therapy curing him. Um, probably won't cure him because curing would mean that you could stop the hormone therapy and never need any further treatment of any kind. But it is possible to go into a durable remission for 10 to 20 years. And um, since the hormone therapy is very effective, if they're successful in getting the PSA down to less than 0.1, keeping it there for a little while, people do have the option of taking holidays from the hormone therapy. So, uh, and they may enjoy uh, long remission periods for more than a year, two or three, where, uh, and then the PSA will start slowly coming back and they'll have to go back on the hormone therapy again. So not likely that they would be cured, but uh, it certainly can be controlled for many, many years. Mm, and that's intermittent hormone therapy, is that what they call it? That would be called intermittent hormone therapy, uh, which we are proponents of if the PSA is suppressed all the way down to point 0.1. How long in between those periods have you seen the PSA stay? You mentioned three or four years. Is that common or is it more within months? Well, it, everyone's got different types of prostate cancer. And so common, uh, no, I would say that uh, when people have metastatic disease in their bones and they do intermittent therapy, the holiday periods tend to be shorter, you know, 12 to 18 months, something like that. Thank you guys so much for commenting on our YouTube videos. We really appreciate your questions and it's an honor to be able to answer them. If you would like further information about any of the topics that we talked about today, you can visit our website at pcri.org. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so. You can hit the subscribe button below. And if you have more questions, go ahead and leave them in all of our YouTube comments. We'll, our team will pick it up from there. We hope you have a great week.